What is going on, guys? Cody here. Trainwreck Podcast, episode 40. We are now officially in MILF age, baby. I am joined by Drew, the diehard Chiefs hater. Uh, Zach may or may not be joining us later, but if not, we got a lot of stuff planned for you on the show. And I know there's probably some of you that subscribed to me this, this week because I picked up about 50 subscribers. This is the Trainwreck Podcast, and it's going to live up to that name, man. It's going to be a shit show. And uh, we're going to talk about football, wrestling, uh, inappropriate stuff that's going to make you think, like, God, these guys need to be thrown into a psych ward. But it's always fun. And, you know, we're all three really good friends, you know, so our camaraderie is really good, you know, and a lot of good back and forth. And we haven't screamed at each other yet on the show yet, but... <laughs> Uh, me and Drew may get in some debates about the Pro Bowl later that may cause us to yell at each other. <laughs> but Drew, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing good. Still sick, but getting better. Dude, you've been sick for like three weeks. Yeah, just a lot of congestion. Sure you don't have like fucking Ebola or something? Well, or probably. I work at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I know, dude, like... I went outside, you know, I haven't left my house for like a month other than go to the doctors and stuff like that. But now I got this, uh, like sniffle that won't go away. And I'm like, dude, but I, then again, I'm also like, shit, I haven't been exposed to germs lately. So my body's pretty weak. I'm going to wheel my way through Walmart so I can, uh, build my immune system back up. Heck yeah, brother. Yeah. Then I need to get a new Xbox controller because uh, mine's pissing me off. <laughs> oh, you're gonna find a replace that broken ass controller, yeah. Yeah, either that or get a new wire for this one because the wire is actually I'll show you. It's on its last legs. Oh my god, dude. You need yeah. to retire it. Yeah, before it starts to fire. <laughs> Motherfuckers, I'm tired of scramble, but that's too damn bad. Hey, it still works. I just had to like twist it around a few times. Ain't, you know, ain't gonna shame the kink, all right? <laughs> but yeah, I I need to get a new control. I almost because I couldn't get it to work the other night, and you were closing, and I seriously almost called you like, dude, I'll send you sixty bucks right now. Can you buy me a new controller? <laughs> But it was also like 10.30 at night, so I was like, oh, there's no way he's going to be able to get that. No, fuck that. 10 o'clock hits, I'm ready to go home. Yeah. But MLB The Show, I've been playing that a lot, thanks to Cloud Gaming on Xbox Live. This podcast is brought to you by Xbox. Just kidding, don't sue us, Microsoft. But, yeah, I've been playing that a lot. And, man, Cloud Gaming is so freaking cool, but... Man, I wish you didn't have to wait 15 minutes to get into a game. Like, if it's like 7 o'clock, you have to like wait because so many people are logging on at once. Yeah. So I downloaded some games to play offline. So I've been playing a classic, Star Wars Battlefront 2, the original. Oh. Yeah. Not the new one that sucks. I mean, the new one, eh. I mean, it's not the worst, but it doesn't compare to the original. Battlefront, the new Battlefront 2 is only good with friends. That's it. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I remember just how easy the game was. I think the first time I hopped into a lobby, I went like 60 and 5. And I was like, what the hell? Like, like I'm, I'm good at shooters, but I'm not that good at them. And I was like, so I'm like, I'm either playing against a bunch of bots right now, which means no one's playing this game, or everyone on this game fucking sucks. Yeah, I've been playing Lethal Company and Enlisted. Nice. As soon as I can get money, I'm going to get Assassin's Creed Mirage. Because I really want to play that. But other than MLB, I haven't really been playing video games that much. I've actually been watching more uh, stuff on Netflix and all that. I watched on Friday the Uncharted movie. With Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg, that oh, yeah. movie was that movie was awesome. Nice. Yeah, I I love the Uncharted games. I haven't played them in a long time because I haven't had a a PlayStation in over ten years. But when I had a PlayStation, I played the Uncharted games, and they're freaking awesome. And the story's amazing. The only thing I didn't really like 
about the the movie is they left out Drake's girlfriend, um, the blonde Elena, I think that's her name. Oh, they did? Yeah, she's not in the movie at all. What? That's kind of stupid. Yeah. And then, like, Chloe's in the game. But, um, yeah, Drake's girlfriend isn't. <laughs> and then, like, I mean, Mark Wahlberg was, you know, awesome in the movie, but he looks nothing like Sully in the game, you know? Oh, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to watch it just because I think Mark Wahlberg's an awesome actor. He's one of the few dudes that I think just doesn't make bad movies. Oh, yeah. I I would tongue punch his fart box. <laughs> Like Mark Wahlberg and like The Rock are two dudes where it's like every movie I've seen, I'm like, ah, I like that movie actually. I didn't think it was that bad. Even like, yeah, we'll get into it here in a second. But The Rock returned to WWE and he was uh, shitting on Baywatch. I was like, I didn't think Baywatch was that bad. But we'll go ahead and get into that. We talked about last week on the show where Triple H teased a former WWE champion to return and we thought it was going to be RVD. And turns out we were wrong, but dang, I kind of wanted to see that happen, especially with WrestleMania being in Philadelphia, you know, the home of ECW. I'm like, it would have been cool to see RVD, but it doesn't look like that happened. Yeah. Instead, we got an even better return. Jinder Mahal made his return to Monday Night Raw. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, Jinder Mahal did come out, though, and made the crowd groan and all that, and... You knew whenever that happened, I'm like, okay, Triple H is not Vince McMahon. He's not this stupid, you know, someone's going to come out. And there was a photo that was circling around earlier of the Rose Bowl, and the two people that were there were The Rock and WWE CEO Nick Khan. And once that photo leaked, I'm like, okay, The Rock's going to be on Raw tonight. So it was pretty much just waiting for Jinder to get through his promo and then you knew The Rock was going to come out. And the thing was, dude, they made Jinder stand out there for like five, ten minutes cutting this promo. It's like, damn, when the hell is somebody going to come out? Yeah. But I guess they also had to. Bad. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought Jinder did good with his promo, at least. It was just more of, God, it's dragging on, so you're not really listening. But yeah. his like delivery of it, I thought, was really good. And um, when he was in the ring with The Rock, I thought he was awesome in that, too. I'm like, Jinder Mahal, actually, I know a lot of people give him shit. I really don't think he's as bad as everybody makes him out to be. He's better than his predecessor in The Great Call League. Yeah, uh, way better. Maybe in, like, 20 years, when they remake The Longest Yard again, Jinder Mahal can be in that movie. <laughs> what That's that another movie. Yeah, that's another movie I just watched the other night, actually, was The Longest Yard. It was, it was all right. I mean, I've seen it before, but I hadn't seen it in a long time. So I was like, okay, I'll watch it again. And Yeah, the outside one's better than the original one. Yeah. But Mahal basically cuts this Fuck America promo and all that, and The Rock comes out and defends the people and stuff like that. And they throw down and at the end of the promo, the rocks talking about, Hey, I'm going to go out on the town and I'm going to go get something to eat. Should I sit in a booth? Should I sit at the bar or should I sit at the head of the table? And you know, that was the line that popped everyone. And so now it looks like they're teasing the rock versus Roman reigns. And as I say that you can hear Cody Rhodes, head exploding off into the distance. <laughs> I, I don't think they're going to actually, I know people are thinking that they're going to do it at Elimination Chamber, maybe. Here's the thing. That show is going to be in Australia. That means it's going to be on at 3 a.m. Central Time. They're not doing the Rock versus Roman Reigns in the middle of the night. I don't know, man. man. It, it might happen. No, there's no way in hell that happens. And even like with the show being on a Saturday, there's no way in hell that happens. I think it's building up towards SummerSlam. Because I think you can't not let Cody Rhodes beat Roman Reigns at WrestleMania because you're going to kill Cody Rhodes if you do that. Yeah. And it's like, you know, they've been going on for a whole year about him finishing the story, you know, and it's like, okay, if he doesn't finish this story, 
no one's going to take anything he says seriously again. Like every promo he says is just going to be, you know, people are just going to be like drowning him out basically because it's like, oh, it doesn't matter what he says. And plus, I don't know if people have forgot about this, but there was a standoff, and I was actually there for it at the October 13th episode of SmackDown. And it was this face off right here Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. They've been teasing it basically since the end of WrestleMania. <laughs> it's like, I think it's more of The Rock is going to be in Cody Rhodes' corner and it's going to set up for something down the line. Yeah, I can see that. And here's the thing, too. Like, you know, you have WrestleMania, which they're going to run in the Eagle Stadium. Um, sorry to the talent that they had to perform in that shithole. But <laughs> with SummerSlam, they've been doing it in football stadiums the last couple of years. You know, two years ago, they did it in the Tennessee Titans Stadium. Last year, they did it at Ford Field, where the Lions play. So they're basically making SummerSlam like WrestleMania, like on par, you know, running in stadiums. And they didn't really sell out Ford Field, I don't think with SummerSlam, if they want to, they can run a football stadium. And if you run the Rock versus Roman Reigns, you're going to sell out that stadium. So they could potentially, you know, have a big, big SummerSlam and a big WrestleMania, you know, within a couple couple months of each other. Yeah. I mean, like, they just need to pick better stadiums. Yeah. Like the Cowboy Stadium, hell, even the Raiders Stadium. Yeah, well, they ran uh, three years ago. They ran SummerSlam at the Raiders Stadium right after it opened. That was the one that had um, Roman Reigns and John Cena in the main event. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. So they've ran some of the nice stadiums, but yeah, now they're kind of because like the the Eagles Stadium fucking sucks. Uh, Ford Field's actually pretty nice. The rumor was that they were going to run the Cleveland Browns Stadium for SummerSlam. It's like, Cleveland fucking sucks. Like, if they, what they really should do for SummerSlam, SoFi Stadium. If you're going to have The Rock in the main event, run in SoFi. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, what was WrestleMania 39's attendance record? The only thing is, it's like, oh, are they going to go back so soon since they just ran WrestleMania last year? But, I mean, they're in the business of making money, you know? Yeah. So the like, attendance... So far, per- it would be a perfect opportunity for them to play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because, you know, Rock, be- Hollywood Rock and all that. Like, you can have The Rock be in Cody Rhodes' corner. You can... You know, have Cody win the title and then on the next SmackDown have an in ring face off between The Rock and Roman Reigns and they agree to face each other at SummerSlam. Then the tickets go go on sale that next week and I guarantee you'll sell out. Yeah. Like that's how, because it's not like, say, like they announce it like four weeks ahead of time. That doesn't give people enough time to buy tickets. You announce it months in advance and you would sell out that stadium. Yeah. See, because the attendance they had for WrestleMania 39 last year, they had 60, 67,000 people both nights. So, I mean, that's what's the all time like SummerSlam attendance record? I think it's like 101,000 because that was the show in uh, Wembley. The record's actually 78,000. So 78,000, so they wouldn't be able to break that record. They could. I mean, the Cowboys Stadium can, they fit 100,000 people in there before. Yeah. They could run, they could run the Cowboys Stadium. Uh, Michigan, well, Michigan isn't really a summer state, but Michigan has the biggest football stadium of the, the mall because they can fit 100,000 people just for football. Now imagine you take the field out of it and you have all those seats. They could get like 120,000 people in there. So <laughs> there's a lot of interesting routes. I don't think they're going to do Rock versus Roman at WrestleMania. I think the Rock will be involved, and then they'll face each other at SummerSlam. Yeah. 
I don't know. It's like it's a tough thing about Cody Rhodes. Because it, I mean, because you don't want you don't want to kill him off like him being like the biggest superstar we we acquire from AEW just to kill him off. Well, that and he's doing like merchandise sales that haven't been seen since John Cena. Oh really? Is, yeah, has been that big. Yeah, like his like his shirts and stuff. I mean, he's a freaking cash cow for WWE. So yeah, they need to really push him then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, it, like a if, good example, like when when Bray Wyatt was still alive when he was a fiend, like when they pushed him as the WWE champion. You saw like a lot of sales, a lot of advertisements, a lot of people getting like the the fiend belt and all that. Yeah. Just just for Goldberg to kill him. Yep, just for Goldberg <laughs> to fucking just to kill him off. And that would basically be the same thing that it'd basically be like Goldberg and the Fiend with The Rock and Cody Rhodes. The only thing that would I think help it is if The Rock faced Cody Rhodes and put him over. Yeah. If he, yeah, that'll hype up the um, the hype of the super, um, God WrestleMania more. Yeah, like God, you could do. Getting, getting me now. <laughs> like you could do the Rock versus Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania, and yeah, you could do the or you could do the Rock versus Cody Rhodes at Elimination Chamber because that's not like too big of a match. I mean, it'd be a big match because it's the Rock wrestling, you know, but it wouldn't be. A Samoan Dynasty match on in the middle of the night, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. There's a bunch of possibilities that they could go with. And I'm trying to think what else is going on in the wrestling world. Uh, no new news on the Chris Jericho allegations, but it's very telling that he hasn't tweeted or anything since those allegations came out. I say I, I think he's fucked. It's pretty much over for him. It's Jover. I didn't watch... Uh, well, I never watched Dynamite, but I don't know if he was on last night, but I doubt he was. I'm still shocked they let him wrestle on the pay-per-view. <coughs> yeah, I figured it was cancel that match. Yeah. It really sucks for Sting because it looks like Chris Jericho is going to be built up to be Sting's last opponent. But at the same yeah. time, we're talking about the cons here. Yeah. I know Tony's a freaking idiot. That being said, though, did you see AEW is going to be making their debut in Tulsa on February 21st? Are they? Oh, yeah. Zach uh, put it in our group chat, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're going to. But here's the thing like, AEW has been struggling to sell tickets, and then they announce a show with five weeks. Like, the tickets don't go on sale till the 8th. So you're giving people five weeks to buy tickets. It's like, that's so stupid. And it's like, that's why your guys' attendance sucks. And, like, I'm glad that they're running new buildings because this company's five years old and this is the first time they're running Tulsa. You know, and meanwhile, they've ran Chicago, like, ten times in one year. Ew. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm glad that they're doing this, but it's also like... Dude, you guys need to figure something out because that's stupid to only give people five weeks. And then their tickets are actually, from whenever I've looked at tickets for them, they're more expensive than WWE tickets. And speaking, WWE, they... Speaking of AEW, what do you think about MGF now? He's he's not going anywhere. It's a work, them taking him off the roster page. Really? Yeah, it, it's a work. He's gonna be he's gonna be gone for a while because he needs to have shoulder shoulder surgery. So I think they're just doing this to play up the aspect of you know because there was the rumor that his contract was gonna be up, and at the end of twenty twenty four, you know they reference in his promos the bidding war twenty twenty four. And I mean, it makes sense that they would take the title off him right before his contract would come up. But from everything I've heard from like Sean Ross Sapp, he he thinks MJF's resigned. Yeah, because I don't I don't see him going to WWE. I don't either. I don't think he would fit really. 
No. <laughs> I think his promos are... But then again, it seems like WWE's kind of leaning in more of a PG-13 direction because you had The Rock saying asshole in his promo. You had Becky Lynch getting blood in her match, you know. I mean, I feel like WWE's going to push the envelope a little bit more. They're just going to they're going to be smarter about it than like AEW is, you know, where there's blood in every single match at AEW, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And there is Zach. How's it going, buddy? Pretty good, man. Sorry, guys. Oh, you're good. I say we were just talking about wrestling and stuff for the last 20 minutes. Yeah, I was overeating at my buddy's house. Oh, what'd you have? <coughs> we had some tacos. Nice. Actually, that's what I'm going to make tomorrow, actually, some tacos. I just took out uh, some steak meat for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had just uh, beef tacos, but steak tacos are real good, too. Yeah, the same meat I use for that cheese dip. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going to use in the, the tacos. Heck, yeah. I think about it, though. Man, that cheese dip sounds good. The cheese dip is good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that cheese dip you and Garrett made, that shit was really freaking good. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's only like three ingredients, really. Like, mm-hmm. nothing else. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. But Drew, did you have anything else you wanted to say about AEW or WWE before we get into the NFL? What do you think about Swerve? I think he's going to be champion in a couple months. I think Samoa Joe's is kind of like a transitional champion. Yeah. I think and, he might become the new face of AEW. Yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, no offense to Samoa Joe, but the dude's like, what, almost 50? And it's like you're really going to build your company around him. Like, here's the thing I don't like about AEW is Samoa Joe's 44, by the way, is everybody holds the belt unless your name is CM Punk for like almost 200 days. You know, the only reason CM Punk didn't hold the belt for longer is the first time he broke his leg, the match after he won the belt, you know, so he only had it for like a week. And the second time he got fired. So, unless your name is CM Punk, you hold on to the belt for a long-ass time. So, I'm hoping Samoa Joe only has, like, a three-month reign with it. And, yeah, Swerve should be the guy to beat him. And then Swerve can have a long reign with it and then lose it to either back to MJF or to Will Ospreay or Kenny Omega or somebody like that. Yeah. Did you guys uh, already know that they were coming here before I sent that to in the group chat? No, I didn't actually. But when I woke yeah. up, I had I had like five, I had like five text messages with all that. <laughs> like I saw that, and yours was the first one I saw, and I was like, "Oh, dang!" And then, heck yeah. And then I looked, and I had like four other messages about it, and I was like, "I mean, I I would consider going to the show, but th- th- their tickets are more expensive than WWE tickets. Are you serious? And it's like, and they're a less, yeah, and they're a lesser brand." It's like their ticket because I looked at going to their show in a- OKC before I broke my foot, and I was like, "These tickets, like, for like by the ringside, like for WWE, it's around five hundred bucks. For AEW, it was almost like six hundred bucks or seven hundred. Actually, it was like six fifty something, and that's not including like the fees and stuff you get from Ticketmaster. You know, <laughs> it's um, ridiculous. And then try to compete with WWE." Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. I know I went to one like around 2012 or something and they came to the BOK Center and uh, mm-hmm. I was sitting on the floor seats and I ran up to right before they're about to get into the ring and I touched the great Collie's hand. He touched mine right. and like eight other kids' hands all at one time. It was crazy. Really? Dude, I've yeah, been to like huge. I've been to I think nine WWE shows. Mm-hmm. And I've sat at ringside for three or four of them. And I remember one time I was sitting ringside and Corey Graves, he's one of the announcers. He came by me and I reached out my hand for a fist bump and he gave me a fist bump. But he was wearing this ring that had a skull on it. So it like stuck out and he just went boom. And that ring hit my hand. God, that fucking hurt. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, I want to be like, you're a fucking jackass. Because <laughs> I'm like. Yeah, he just went full ring into my hand. I was like, dude, you know you're going to get people fist bumps. Take your fucking ring off or use your other hand, asshole. For real. 
it wasn't even like it was his wedding ring, you know? It was yeah. just like a ring that looked cool. That being said, I do like Corey Graves. I think he's an awesome announcer, but yeah, he's also a dick for doing that. <laughs> and um, then last show I went to, I got to give Cody Rhodes a high five, which was pretty fucking awesome. That's I really cool. wish I would have. I really wish I would have had like a name tag saying like my name's Cody too. <laughs> that would have been <laughs> Dude, uh, I ain't gonna lie, back in the like cause I used to watch wrestling a lot. Uh but <laughs> dude, I used to not like Cody Rhodes a lot, but here like within these like cause I I like see it on TV or whatever and I'll look at it for about twenty minutes or whatever, you know, and then I yeah. like him nowadays, but when he first came out and stuff, I did not like him. I, I didn't his dad it's kind of like he was weird, but mm-hmm. I don't know. But. The, only th- the only thing I don't like about Cody Rhodes is the fucking neck tattoo. I'm just yeah. like, dude. It's such I'm a like, turn off. I'm like, dude, yeah, what I, made you think that was a good idea? I, I really think he went through like a midlife crisis in between WWE and AEW. Yeah, some people look good with a neck tattoo. Some people just shouldn't have gotten it. Yeah, he, he's too white to have a neck tattoo. Dude, that's how some kid looks like at Amazon. Like, he's paper white, and he's just got this super black tattoo right here. <laughs> it's like, uh, dude. Oh, my God. It's just, does it look like when you're, like, scribbling, like, a dot on a piece of paper? No, nah, his looks pretty good, It's but it's a tiger. But I don't know. what. Like, it just doesn't, oh like, suit him to me anyway. There's, there's a girl. A boy tattoo. There's a girl I used to work with who almost had like the fucking Mike Tyson tattoo on her face. <laughs> and I'm like, if you were a dude, that'd be a fucking target target for pepper spray. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I was just like, she kind of looked like Mike Tyson too. <laughs> <laughs> I only been one ringside show. I think it's 2009 when Taker was in Tulsa. Oh, really? Yeah. Dude, I remember one tanker, but I don't remember the year. I think it was 2009. Yeah, I can't remember the year that I went either. The coolest experience I ever had was AJ Styles. He like went into the crowd with a microphone and he was like talking to the audience, you know? Yeah. And it was when you remember when they did that Mix Max challenge show on uh, Facebook and yeah. him and Charlotte teamed up? Well, a bunch of people left because in between. Chabot, the end go. of SmackDown and that uh, Mix Max challenge, they filmed 205 Live. So a bunch of people left. And so they're like, oh, hey, you guys come down to make it look more fuller on TV, you know? So I went from sitting, like, you know, I had pretty good seats to sitting ringside. And then after the match, AJ Styles went into the crowd and he stood right next to me while he was interviewing somebody. I'm like, this is the coolest fucking thing ever, you know? Because <laughs> he was teaming with uh, Charlotte and he was like, I want to hear everybody's best woo impersonations. And I mean, I'm still a. I'm still a huge AJ Styles fanboy, but this is when AJ Styles was the the man. Like he was WWE champion for a year and stuff. I mean, he had a killer match with Andrade. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is when AJ Styles was like the top dog. <clears throat> and so, I mean, I still I'm still a huge fan of him. Hold on, I'm about to try to find it because mm. I want to say it was around like 2011. That's the one yeah. I went to, and dude, that one was crazy. I'm looking. Oh, dude, you had freaking Cody Rhodes and, or you had yeah, uh, yeah, you had a tag match with Cody Rhodes and Sheamus, and you had Randy Orton versus Daniel Bryan. That was probably yeah. I remember. Uh, I remember when he was like, "No, or yes." Well, I yeah, what one he was doing at that time? But yeah, that was that was hilarious. But yeah, I liked Sheamus too. Sheamus. I don't know. He came out of like nowhere back in the day, and I li- I liked him because he just looked kind of crazy, and he was a big old pale guy. Yeah, Sheamus. I don't know if you ever heard about like how Sheamus got employed, but he basically like got a job with WWE because he was Triple yeah, H's workout buddy. Damn. Yeah, I mean he was a wrestler and all that, but Triple H kind of helped like get his foot in the door. Right. I mean that's cool. Yeah. Sheamus so by the way, I was hit. right about mine. It was, it was 2009. 2009. SmackDown. And featured John Morrison, Feely, 
defeating Mike Knox and Dolph Ziggler and Kane, Slam J, Batista, The Big Show, Chris Jericho, Qualification, mm-hmm. Dave Smith, Tyson Kidd, JTG, whatever, CM Punk defeating The Undertaker. Yeah. Oh, nice. Let's see, the first show I ever went to was in 2018. And it had Daniel Bryan and The Miz, a promo to open the show. You ha- It was the show after Becky Lynch won the title from Charlotte. And that, was <coughs> yeah. the, that was the main event. And then you had AJ Styles versus Andrade in an incredible match. That was... I can September 18th of 2018 because I pulled up the video. It doesn't have me standing next to AJ, but you can see me in the crowd. Let me see me right there. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm trying to think. I think I was wearing my Dak Prescott jersey during that. (laughs) I didn't didn't have a wrestling t-shirt. At that time, I did buy one that night, and I also got a AJ Styles autograph that's actually in my other room, the spare room over here. I need to get hung on my wall and put it next to those ones. But that's the first like framed wrestling autograph I ever got. Dude, I'm one of like my next uh, things that I want to do to my room. I definitely want to get like Raiders sign. Sorry, someone was calling me, so I don't know if you heard me. But I said I wanted to get a Raiders signed memorabilia. Mm-hmm. That'd be lit. Just yeah. have either like jerseys or just different stuff that pe- footballs that people sign, maybe helmets. That'd be yeah. sick. I know. I really want to get either a Jason Wynn like framed like jersey with an autograph on it. Or a, a Dak Prescott one. There was a Jason Wynn one I found, actually. I think I sent it to Drew, and it was it was expensive. I can't remember how much it was. But, was God, it like I wanted it so freaking bad. Was that? Wasn't it like a thousand range? Yeah. It was, it was, I think it was between like 600 or a thousand bucks. Honestly, I'd probably like a, a Michael Crabtree signed jersey mm-hmm. or a Max Crosby signed jersey. Jersey, Crosby would be sick. Or Marshall Lynch. Man, I'd love Bo Jackson. That'd be the top tier one you could get. I feel like. I think old school. I would really want Michael Irvin's. Yeah, that'd be sick too. Yeah. Or Barry Sanders, either one. Oh, Barry Sanders would be sick. Oh, if you could get an OSU Barry Sanders signed jersey, that'd be, I bet you that'd be worth so much money. There's a lot of old people. Ronnie Lott, there's like, dude, there's so many people that you could think of that are just, if you had theirs, wow. The first wrestling autographs I ever got, I found them were Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks. Sasha doesn't work for WWE anymore. Becky Lynch, this was. (laughs) Before she became a huge star, but they had opened a cricket wireless store in Broken Arrow, and WWE was running a show that night. And so, uh, crickets partnered with WWE, so they brought them to kind of help open the store. That's crazy. Did you yeah, go up no, there and say what's up to them and shit? I got a photo with them. I'll show you. Heck Dude, yeah. you can just see like I'm so like awkward and shit in this photo because it's like, what the hell am I gonna do? Can't I'm not gonna like hug them or anything. They could whoop my ass, you know. <laughs> hell, that was I think I was oh fifteen. Oh, that's baby Cody. Yeah, I was like fifteen in that photo. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, like no beard at all. I couldn't even grow a beard back then. But <laughs> yeah, I had my uh, bag on from school. I mean, hell, you can see how fucking chubby I was, too. <laughs> you came right from school to there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no way. Yeah, and then, yeah, I like, I, like, begged my mom, like, on the way home, like, please, just drop me off here. <laughs> <coughs> and I, st- I stood in line for, like, two hours. Damn. Yeah. What did they say whenever you weren't, did when you didn't buy anything? 
I was 15, so it's like, I don't think they really expected me to go in there and buy a phone or anything. Right. I was like, yeah. hey, I have I have a Cricket phone, if that makes things better. Yeah. <laughs> I was just glad I had a good phone to take pictures on, because I had a Nokia phone at the time, and that, that phone was such a piece of shit. <laughs> it was long before I upgraded to iPhone. Yeah, that sounds crazy. But I still haven't met any Dallas Cowboys, and that's like on my list. Like, I want to meet like Dak Prescott or Jason Wynn, Tony Romo, like, you know, some of my favorite players. Like, if they ever did like a mean greet, oh, I would drive down to Dallas for that. I only met one Raider. That's Josh Jacobs. Really? Yeah, because my dad used to be his neighbor. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn, I've yeah. never even met him. That's awesome. I wish I could. Have yeah, you met I know, have, have I, you ever I met, met anyone famous? Jacob. Have I met someone famous? Yeah, other than Josh Jacobs. Uh, the driver for Gravedigger. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kid Rock. Oh, nice. Dang, y'all met some people. I've only met like the people that they brought to school and stuff. Like the, the, uh, it was either in the NFL player, the bus, or the driver. I'm pretty sure it was the driver and not the bus. Mm-hmm. And then he came to oh, for, like the auditorium. Sam Bradford. Dang, bro. See, I, I ain't even. This is when he was in college. See, the only Dude, I've things... never met anybody famous. Really? Like the only fam- famous people I've ever met are wrestlers. Like, and how like Becky Lynch and Sasha, I guess, are the only ones I've ever technically met. Like, other than like high fives and stuff with people at ringside, you know. <laughs> like yeah. uh, Becky Lynch and Sasha are the only ones I've ever actually talked to. Dude, but, the wow, kid I've never met any concert I went to. There were so much fucking titties in the air. Really? Yeah. Oh, this is probably this is probably right after that all summer that all summer long song came out. I bet. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and that yeah that was like the slut song back then. That was the slut song. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I I didn't care. I was like a teenage Drew, and I was having a good old time. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, there's never a bad time to see boobs. For real. Yeah, like, like I said, I really want to. Jerry Jones would be a fucking dream. I don't know if that would ever happen. Um, Troy Aikman would be awesome. Eminem would be so fucking cool. I'm trying to sit here and think. I've literally never met nobody famous, I don't think. I say you met me. I'm semi famous, 708 subscribers. You are. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Actually, actually, I got to look his name up, mm. but he played at OU and now he's in the NFL, I think. Trey Brown? He, no, I think he plays. He played for OU and he's a lineman or, a, or he's like a defensive lineman. I think he plays for the Browns now or something. It's definitely like weird like when you see somebody on TV and then you see him in person. Like That's the thing that always shocks me whenever I go to like WWE shows live is just – like I remember when I when I first saw Edge, like I don't know why, I just seen him on TV. I didn't think Edge was that big, and then I saw him in person. I'm like, this dude's a fucking giant. Like, and then I looked up his height. He's like six four. I'm like, damn. I'm like, maybe it's because he was standing next to Beth Phoenix, so that made him look even taller. And he was in the ring with the Miz, so that made him look taller. But He's I was like, still damn, Beth Phoenix is a fucking unit. Yeah, I mean she's buff, but she isn't tall. She just looks big. <clears throat> yeah. I've met Isaiah Thomas, and he plays for the Browns. Isaiah Thomas, he's he's pretty good, too. He's been on the Browns for a while, hasn't he? Since. Well, he got drafted in 2022. Isn't he the one whose wife – oh, wait, no, that's someone different. I say there's a dude for the Browns that his wife, like, makes TikToks of them, like, going to games – I don't think oh. that's him, though. Yeah, I met him at Tanner's house. 
while <laughs> Tanner and them weren't there because the kid down the street who just brought him over, and he was mm-hmm. like, uh, his, you know who Anariah is? Yeah. Her cousin, he came down there to Tanner's house and just brought that guy and was like, y'all trying to hang out and whatever? And then uh, he was like, yeah, I'm committed to OU. And I was like, really? I'm the biggest OU fan. I was like, I'm the biggest OU fan ever and shit. And it was cool time, cool time. Yeah, because I'm looking, he went to Memorial. Yeah, that's where they were going. Did he whoop your ass at Sandberg? No. <laughs> uh, we never yeah. played, no, like, we didn't play nobody. Uh, we didn't really have any sports except for baseball. But, all right, we're going to, we're not going to do predictions this week, mainly because all the, most of the games are kind of meaningless. Like, the only games that really, like, matter is, like, Buffalo and Miami. There's a bunch of meaningless games. But I am going to give you guys the floor to talk about the Raiders real quick. Just what are you guys' thoughts? Their season, you know, they're eliminated from the playoffs. Is there anything that you think they're going to do in the off season to improve the team? Do I think so? Probably not. But do I hope? Yes. I think that we definitely need a quarterback regardless – of uh, what we got to do, like we got if we got to trade up, we got to trade up. If uh, we got to trade to get somebody that's a star in the league already, we got to do that. We just either have to get a one of the best quarterbacks in the come in the league coming up right now, or trade for a star right now. We have to do one or the other, and I feel like our team would be pretty decent if we did that. But uh, See, we're lacking. So I'll put it like this. I'll ask you guys three questions. Who's your guys' head coach next year, both of you? Antonio Pierce. I'll give you two answers, either Antonio Pierce or uh, I'm going to go with um, Jim Harbaugh. Okay. Who's your guys' quarterback next year? I can give you like four answers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give you guys my my answer. I think it might be Russell Wilson. I hope not. I swear to God, Cody. Yeah, don't put that I on I swear to thing. fucking God. Because you guys are going to be picking in the middle of the first round, so a lot of those quarterbacks are probably going to be gone. I mean, Let's yeah. See. I'm thinking either. Ooh. Oh, man. I, I just thought of one, but I really hope it doesn't happen for you guys because I don't wish this on you. Go Spencer, ahead, Rat- Spencer Rattler. I hope not either. Oh, God, no. Yeah. I was just thinking about that. I'm like, he might be the only quarterback that might be available. But if you think about this, the the Bears might trade their – what what do they got? They got the first pick and what other pick? It's in the top ten. Yeah, it's definitely – I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like either – they got the first and then like the fourth or the fifth. Or something like that. They did a few weeks ago, but then they went and won a bunch of games in a row because they're seven and nine right now. I think they have at least like two top fifteen picks. I'll look right now for you guys. But anyways, I think honestly, you're Justin Fields. If Bears aren't willing to trade him, that's what I was thinking. Either if him, um. If we trade up, I'm thinking we either would get Caleb or Michael because those are the only two that I would want, either Caleb or Michael. Either Justin Fields, honestly, I could still see O'Connell. They might have to get a good offensive coordinator for him. Or or like trading up to get um, Sanders, Jadir Sanders. I don't think Sanders is in there in the draft. No, he didn't. But he was. Oh, never mind. No, he didn't. He, I thought he was. No, because no, he, he um he he sucked too bad at the end of the season to really be like a high draft pick. Plus, I mean, you got what Drake yeah, May, Caleb Drake, Williams, Drake, Caleb Drake Williams. Drake May. I really don't want him. I I think he's going to the Patriots anyway. Because the Patriots are gonna the Bears are gonna have the tenth pick, the first and the tenth. Yeah, but you trade up with think... Drake May or um, Daniels from LSU. Do you think uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. could fall to tenth or no? Oh God, no! 
I think he's going to go to Washington. Because I've been hearing that the Bears would really want him. And he yeah, could help I've... out because uh, he could help out fucking what fields. And yeah. I guess he was a uh, high school teammates with DJ Moore and they were like spectacular or something. Really? Yeah. So, so hey, I'll show you guys the, quick. I'll show you guys the draft order right now. So you guys, I think are picking 12th. Yeah. 12th uh, ain't good enough. We're going to have to trade up and trade like a second or a third round. The bears have the first pick Washington at number two. The Patriots at number three, Cardinals at four, the Giants at five, Chargers at six, Titans at seven, Jets eight, Falcons nine, Bears ten, Raiders eleven, Vikings twelve, Saints thirteen, Broncos fourteen, Seahawks fifteen, Bengals sixteen. And then the Cardinals have another first round pick at 17. I think that's the one they got from the Texans. The Steelers at 18. And then the rest are TBD because these are teams that are in the playoff picture right now. Yeah. So we'll look at the top 10. So the Bears are in the running for a quarterback. Washington's in the running for a quarterback. Patriots are going to take a quarterback. The Giants might take a quarterback. The Chargers aren't. The Titans won't. The Jets might. So that's what, five teams? The Falcons might. So, I mean, that's like, what, six teams before you guys get to your pick at 11. So that could be six dudes off the board right there. It's not even including Trey. Yeah, we need to look up some mock drafts because, oh, this is making me nervous as shit. Hmm. I seen one where we were trading up to number one pick, but I doubt that mm. the Raiders aren't smart enough. So this is courtesy of CBS. We'll look at their mock draft real quick. So what do this you is... need, Cody? What do y'all? Who do? You, what do you need to draft? Well, I mean... l- l- uh, offensive lined up because Zach Martin, Ch- Tyron Smith, they're really old. Uh, Terrence Steele fucking sucks. You know, other than Tyler Biotish and Tyler Smith, we don't really have like any young good offensive linemen. So we're gonna be picking towards the bottom of the first round. That's gonna be and with all these quarterbacks that are gonna be taken and receivers, you know, all these position players, skill position players. That means there's gonna be some good linemen available at the end of the first round. Yeah, for sure. But ever since Dan Quinn has took over as defensive coordinator, all of our first round picks have went to Defense. defensive lines linemen, all are, except for uh, Tyler Smith. But Micah Parsons and Mozzie Smith and somebody else. Well, there was one draft where, like, the first three rounds we went we went nothing but defense because I think that's when we got Parsons and Trayvon Diggs and Sam Williams in our first three picks. So, yeah, for the Cowboys, they need to spend their first two-round picks on offensive line depth because Dak Prescott has gotten his ass whooped this year. And then you can shore up the secondary with a third and a fourth. But we're looking at this mock draft right now, courtesy of CBS. They got Marvin Harrison Jr. going number one to the Bears. Caleb Williams to Washington, which if Caleb Williams goes to Washington, he's dead. Number three, Drake May to the Patriots. I think that's the consensus dude for the Patriots. He kind of looks uh, like I'll... a he kind of looks like a young Tom Brady. Yeah, he looks like a Patriots quarterback. Yeah. I don't know how the fuck to say this guy's name, but he's going number four to the Cardinals. <laughs> Uh, number five, Malik neighbors to the Giants. I really think the Giants might take Daniels. They can get out of Daniel Jones's contract after this year. See the Chargers, Brock Bowers, the Titans, Joe Alt. So 
see, they got Jaden Daniels going to the Falcons at nine. So they still don't got Michael Penix on the, off the board? No. See, they got you guys drafting a corner at 11. <laughs> yeah. Man. Man. <coughs> That's lovely. Let's see. I don't see Penix. They got him going to the Broncos. That ain't going to happen. I feel like you guys would take Penix just so he wouldn't go to Denver. Dude, if he goes the if, if we get another elite court, like I'm not saying he's okay, he's good, but I don't know how elite he is. But we have too many elite quarterbacks. We have Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert. They're too good, bro. That's too too many in one conference. See, they got Dallas picking a safety. We really don't need a safety. So I don't know how credible. And this we can... is this is all just like guessing this guy could just be or whoever this i mean i know it's cbs but whoever picked it out could just be wrong i I said i think you guys i i don't even know if denver ends up taking a quarterback they might they might try to stick with stidham you know who knows i i just don't see like Jaden daniels working out with sean payton yeah no i don't think so either Not, not without sean payton trying to make him like a gadget guy like Taysom hill but like I said, instead of doing predictions this week, we're actually going to do a tier maker instead of of predictions. Like I said, because there's a bunch of games that don't matter, so we'll be grading every NFL team. Let me get the tier maker up, and this order is random. So the first team up is the New Orleans Saints. They've really been inconsistent this year. They should be way better than what they are, but it seems like Derek Carr and Dennis Allen's kind of held them back. I mean, they're still in a playoff race. They kind of need some help if they want to get there. But either way, they're a mediocre team, and I'd I'd personally put them in the C tier. They have a really good defense, and just their offense is ass. Yeah, honestly, my opinion. Probably a D tier. I think they just benefit being in the NFC South. Yeah. If they go to either conference, it'll, it'll be w- much worse. Yeah, because they got two free wins from the Panthers, you know. So, honestly, I'll probably go with the C minus. I know that's not a deal, but yeah, C minus, D plus, something around there. Okay. We'll, we'll throw them in D just to. Uh... Kind of even it out. I mean, the Dolphins, they're next. There's no other way you can argue they've been an A team all year. Yeah, from the mo- yeah. I would say so. Yeah. Same with the Ravens. I mean, they're the top seed in the AFC. Can you believe that they just whooped on uh, them? Miami. That was crazy, huh? I know. I mean, it makes you wonder. I mean, Miami, when it gets to December time, they freaking collapse. And Dolphins it makes you wonder. The cold. It makes you wonder how they're going to do in the playoffs. Like, because I could. Well, we already saw they can get their ass whooped by the Ravens. I think they could lose to the Chiefs. I think they could lose to like the fucking Texans. Like the Dolphins right. are in some deep shit right now. And it looks like Tua got hurt in that game against the Ravens. So we'll see how that plays out. And Tyree Kill these last couple of weeks really hasn't done much. You see what happened to Tyree Kill? Yeah, his house catching on fire. That was freaking insane. I wonder, because he has this big setup for his podcast and streaming and all that. I wonder yeah. if he had like too many outlets plugged in or something. I guess or it what was happened. some kid uh, messing with a match. Really? Yeah. Makes sense. He's got like 20 kids. One of them is going to be a pyromaniac. It was either a match or a lighter is what oh, I was damn. reading. But I could have been reading fake news, but that's just what I was saying. The Bengals. Yep, you were right. It was a kid playing with a lighter. Really? Damn. Yep. Lesson of the day, people don't have children. They'll burn your house down. <laughs> right. Next up is the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, I know the Bengals had high expectations going to the season, but they've also been injured to hell. I actually think they belong in a, a light B tier because – 
they still got eight or nine wins without Joe Burrow. They did have that early season 0-2, 0-3 start, but they dug themselves out of that. Actually, now I say that, I kind of talked myself more into a C tier because, I mean, they were projected to be a 13-win team, but they're also without a top five quarterback in the NFL. I mean, yeah, like, healthy Joe Burrow is, like, probably one of the best quarterbacks in the league. That old three, <coughs> two or three start, it was pretty bad. Hmm. I'm gonna put him seats here myself. All right. I yeah, yeah, because they're missing Burrow. Burrow's yeah, that's sad. Poor guy. And uh, hang on, before we go any more, just because I'm thinking about this, because I'm about to take my dog out, and it hmm. happened last time I took my dog out. Uh, so. I'm taking my dog out, and I just hear this boom, and I'm like, I look around, I'm like, what the heck was that? And uh, so I look, I keep, I just keep looking around and whatnot, and uh, I see my stepdad come out on the balcony, and I see more people come out, and my stepdad goes, hey, and like, I thought he was screaming at me or something, and I see him looking the other way, and he's looking at to two kids in the field, and like, it's like they either it sounded like they either shot off a shotgun, blew up something in one of these alleys or something. And uh, I was like in the dog park with Kodak and uh, I heard him say, hey, and those kids just were like walking and I was like left Kodak over there and I was like, it's okay, I'll go get him. And I started running <laughs> after him and literally they took off running and I chased them all the way to the woods. Dude, I- I, I think I heard that earlier, actually. I heard a big boom outside. Was this, like, an hour ago? What? That was? Dude, yeah, that was this, this. Dude, the cops came over here and everything. Damn. Dude. Yeah, I was like, what the hell? Hmm. Yeah, there's, there's this weird shit that happens in this damn neighborhood all the time. I mean hell like with how bad my sleep schedule has been lately i've been like just hearing the freaking crackheads that walk up and down the street you know yeah and little kids out here they don't do they're crazy they'll just do anything now yeah bunch of young clothes bunch of game bangers (laughs) the denver broncos i think we all agree they belong in f tier i mean they had high expectations going to this season they've just completely shit their pants well, I don't know about F, but I mean, they are pretty bad. I, I mean, I'd, I'd put them in maybe D because they do have eight wins, but yeah, I was gonna say D, but yeah, uh, D. Because I mean, they're not like, 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 because they were going on a run for a little bit. Now there's drama, so the, yeah, they're probably gonna fall off a little more. All right, and then the Giants, they're an F tier. I mean. They went from playoff team last year to having the fifth pick in the draft. I mean, yeah. their season their season was over from the first game when they got destroyed by Dallas. That's pretty reasonable. Yeah. You, you agree with that, Zach? Yeah. Right. And then the Vikings, the Vikings are basically the Bengals, if you ask me. Kind of same situation where they were injured to hell. You know, they lost Kirk Cousins. They didn't have Justin Jefferson cool. for a few games. You know, played in a relatively competitive division with the Lions and Packers. I, I'd put the Vikings in C tier just because I think they're the same as the Bengals. Yeah, I was going to say C or D, honestly. Yeah, C. All right. The Rams. Now, hear me out. The Rams, I thought, were going to be horrible this year, and they've clinched a playoff spot. I thought they were going to be full tank mode. I didn't think Sean McVay had any control of this locker room anymore. I figured they were just going to be coasting off the Super Bowl victory from a few years ago. I would put the Rams in A because they really exceeded expectations. Eh, I won't put them in A. I would say B. We're being being better what expected, but I'll uh, be dominating. I was uh, what's their record? Because I was gonna probably say like a C plus B minus type deal, you know. 
I think they're they're either nine and seven or ten and seven. Let me look. Yeah, I would say probably like a C plus is what I'd probably give them. They're nine and seven right now. Uh, how about we'll throw them in B tier because we got A, B, C. We'll be in the middle and go B. Yeah, yeah, for sure. E. Buccaneers. The Buccaneers should have clinched a playoff spot weeks ago. That's my problem with them. That being said, Baker Mayfield's been phenomenal. Him and Mike Evans seem like a great connection. Let's go. It's just Rashad I mean, White fucking sucks. They have no running game at all. And other than Mike Evans, they really don't have any other receivers. Um, God, you know, get people like, oh, you should see the stats. Like, that's not everything, all right? If you actually watch the film, watch the games, he fucking sucks. Yeah, if you looked at Derek Carr's uh, numbers on paper, he looked really good. But if you watched him play, he sucked. Mm-hmm. Basically like Russell Wilson in Denver and Seahawks. Come on. We're going inside. Let's go. We're not playing this shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's too cold. I got this big-ass deck on. I can barely feel my thumb. Come on. C tier. Yeah. Yeah. The Lions, the Lions, they're a tier, obviously. Yeah, I'd say so because man, man they're, they, the they're things that Dan right Campbell now. did for that team is remarkable. Mm. I know it's so happy to see that that man's really been in Denver, just or not Denver, in Detroit, trying to work his ass off, and then he's really worked, 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 and it's paid off for him. Honestly, Denver's became like not, no, not Denver. Detroit became <laughs> my like. That. Favorite <laughs> NFC team. Cowboys. <clears throat> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm going to be scared if we end up having to play them in the playoffs again after. Like, I'm a, ha- I'm a huge Raiders fan. I'm becoming like a, a lover for the Detroit Lions. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i always a Baker Mayfield fan. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if the Cowboys get eliminated, I'll root for the Lions. Unless the Lions are the ones that eliminate us, then I'll root for anyone to beat them. You just as long as you're facing, right? Who? The Green Bay Packers in playoffs? Unless the Packers lose on Sunday, then we would face the the Seahawks. The whole whole Desmond Bryan catch. Hey, this one will be in Dallas, though. It won't be in fucking gay ass Lambeau Field. But yeah, I've realized how much shit I talked about the Packers, and now we might face them in the playoffs. <laughs> they've, been, they've been listening, bro. Yeah. This is as long as we don't get another 49ers Eagles NFC championship because, God, that was miserable for me. Two, the two teams I hate the most playing each other with a ch- chance to go to the Super Bowl. I mean, I yeah. <laughs> as long as we don't get an NFC championship that I can't watch. Like if we get the Lions or the Cowboys or the Rams or anybody other than 49ers versus Eagles again. I mean, like how the Eagles been playing here lately, you probably get your wish. Yeah. All right, the Bears. Now, the Bears, I think, deserve a B tier because I thought they were only going to win like three games and they've won seven. They're still in the playoff hunt. And, I mean, it's not like, Oh, you hear the Bears have the number one pick. They suck. No, they got the Panthers' first first overall pick from that trade, you know. I mean, the Bears, honestly, are way better than I thought they were going to be. That being said, I think Justin Fields sucks. But for how much talent on the Bears, they've over-exceeded expectations, I think. And uh, I know Bears fans probably aren't going to want to hear this, but they're probably going to keep Matt Everflus because of this. <laughs> I think the Bears are like the Buccaneers, honestly. I don't think Justin yeah, Fields that bad. I think it's just like the coaching for him is just dog shit. So overall, like he's gonna be bad. I mean, I don't think they deserve a B, but a C for sure. What I was about you, say Zach? Either. Uh... We can meet in the middle at C because I was going to say a D or a C. Okay. 49ers, obviously, A. Yeah. We'll go ahead and put them right here. Yeah. A. I mean, 
I mean, with how bad they've fallen off this last couple of games, I think they at least deserve a B because they've pissed away the division lead. I know, but they lost one game at first, and everybody was losing like three, four. Uh, I mean, I don't know. honestly, the B actually fits them. Not they're not A anymore. I mean, I just wonder what they would look like without the tush push. <laughs> so we'll throw them in B, even though probably a basic ass Heinz offense. And then I'll let you guys. I think the Raiders should de- be a C tier, but I'll let you guys decide on that. I got to pee really freaking bad, so you guys can talk about the Raiders where you would. Put I was them. just gonna say a C or a D for sure because, I mean, our offense sucks, but our defense has been showing out ever since we had Antonio Pierce. So, ever and since then- we fired Josh McDaniels, our defense is like actually like so good. Yeah, because they pretty much led Patrick Ram to do what he needs to do. Uh, and I hope we keep him as our defensive coordinator. I think that's going to be hundred percent for sure. I don't think Mark Davis is going to let him walk. I wouldn't. No way. Not after what he just seen. Now you need to go out and get you a good offensive coordinator, and you'll be set. You wouldn't have these problems where you're yelling in the stands and stuff. You know, getting all mad because yeah, we yeah. don't need. Y2 banana cross route John Gruden make very predictable yeah. offense because you know everyone knows his offense at this point. Yeah, so when he a long time. I mean we do need a like a veteran offensive coordinator or pretty much a rookie coordinator that's you know can be risky. You know, this you is know, Vegas, baby. Oh, we're all, all we're all about the risk. I, as much as I don't want him to be, do you know who Cliff Kingsbury is? Yeah, I know. Doesn't he have good ties with Caleb Williams? I don't think he will come back to NFL. I mean, maybe not because after what Arizona and everything went through, but I'm just I'm just putting scenarios in my head because I know if we that, get uh, please, yeah. Cliff Kingsbury, when we had the trade for him from the Cardinals. He got fired by the Cardinals. Um, yeah, so we can just hire him. I think he went back to college. Let me look real quick. I mean, that's the word I've heard he's been trying to or something like that. <laughs> I mean, if he's available as for OC, I wouldn't mind it. Hey, he... He's the QB coach at USC right now where Caleb Williams goes to school. But there's no way in hell you guys are getting Caleb Williams. Yeah, no. We're not getting Caleb Williams. Well, I don't want Caleb Williams. I don't I mean, want Caleb Williams, but I want Michael Penix or him for sure. If we I, don't trade for somebody that's already a star. Like, if we don't get Justin Fields. Um, yeah, uh, Justin Fields, Michael Penix, or um, Daniels from LSU. Him, um, if we can't get maybe even there's a there's multiple quarterbacks out there that I'd like to have, really. So, do you guys agree on C tier? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I was gonna say D or C, but C because their defense has been showing up clutch ever since old boy left. Yeah, the Packers. Packers are another team I thought were going to be like the Rams where they were going to be tanking. And it looked like, you know, at the trade deadline, they got rid of Rasul Douglas, one of their best corners, you know, besides Jair Alexander. So it looked like they were going to be tanking. And then they went on this run, and now they're in a scenario now where if they beat the Bears on Sunday, they're in the playoffs, and they would face the Cowboys. And I will have a fucking heart attack if we lose to them. Um, But I think the Packers deserve a B tier because they've exceeded expectations. (laughs) You agree with that, Zach? Yeah. All right. Washington, definite F. I mean, they suck. Ron Rivera is a terrible coach. I mean, I'd but say they're quarterback. Cool for commander, cool. though. I will say that. What'd you say, Zach? I was like, I was saying for that quarterback, that one guy, he's Sam Howell. He's pretty good, honestly. Like, if he had, like, a, if that guy was on, like, a 49ers team. That guy would be fucking dangerous. Yeah. 
he's got arm talent. He just doesn't have good decision making, but he's also basically a rookie on a crappy team that has. Yeah, and sometimes he has to make throws or just throw it away, you know, because his line sucks. Yeah. Like, that's why I don't agree with Ron Rivera benching him. Like I said, that's why I'm glad Ron Rivera is going to get fired because I just don't think Rivera is a good coach anymore. The Cardinals. I know the Cardinals only have four wins, but they've beat the Eagles and the Cowboys, who are both going to be in the playoffs. They who are their other wins? I mean, ever since they got Kyler Murray back, they've been way better. So I think the Cardinals, like I know a bunch of people projected the Cardinals to not even win a game this year. So I mean, I I'd put them in a, a D tier. I wouldn't put them in F because they have a lot of talent. It's just they're rebuilding, you know. Yeah, it's a respect. There are other, there are other wins were against the Falcons and the Steelers, so we'll put them in D tier. Speaking of the Steelers, I know Mike Tomlin's kept his, you know, non losing streak season alive, but the Steelers have looked like shit. I mean, they lost to two teams that at the time had two wins with the Cardinals and the Patriots, and I mean their offense even after they got rid of Matt. Matt Canada, Mike Canada, whatever his name was. I mean, even since then, their offense has still sucked. I mean, Kenny Pickett, I th- I think Pittsburgh needs to move on from Kenny Pickett because Joe Flacco in one month has more career touch had more touchdowns in the month of December than Kenny Pickett does in his entire two year career. That's sad. I mean, yeah, Kenny Pickett, I think fucking sucks. I think the Steelers honestly deserve a D tier because their hit. defense well, is phenomenal. Um, they, they've kind of just lucked their way to nine wins, if you ask me. So I think D tier. What about you guys? Yeah, I do that. Because of Mike Tomlin. <laughs> the Bills, I mean, the Bills struggled early in the season, and then they got rid of their offensive coordinator. And ever since then, they've been lights out. I think they're going to beat Miami this Sunday and win the division. I I don't think they're an A team just because they do have their struggles, but I I think they're definitely a solid B. B for Buffalo. Yeah, that's fine. You yeah, agree with that? Yeah, I would Sean. say B. They're definitely better than the C group. Mm-hmm. The Falcons fucking suck. They belong in F, if you ask me. Yeah, by Arthur Smith. Hmm. I'd say, yeah, I was going to say D or F for sure. Because, I mean, if they would utilize their talent, they'd be running away with the NFC South. But Arthur Smith's a fucking idiot. Uh, the Seahawks are a beer, uh, beer, B team. You can tell what my thoughts are on right now. <laughs> the Seahawks are a B team, if you ask me. I mean, it looks like they need a lot of help to get into the playoffs, but they've also had a really tough schedule. I mean, they've had to play San Francisco twice. They had to play Philly, and they beat Philly, you know. They were really competitive with Dallas. The Seahawks just had a really tough schedule. I I think they're a solid B. Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah, that's that seems right. Like, even if they don't make F. Yeah, the Patriots suck. There's no other way around it. Yeah, they ass. The Browns, now hear me out. I hate the fucking Browns, but they deserve an A tier just because four different quarterbacks, they have a 10 win season still somehow. They lost the best running back in the league next to Christian McCaffrey, if you ask me, and Nick Chubb, and they still haven't really missed a beat on their rushing attack. I really think that shows how great of a coach Kevin Sifansky is. And really kind of proves that they don't need Deshaun Cosby. But, I mean, I think the Browns the Browns are my favorite to get to the AFC Championship. I don't think they would because I think they would end up facing the Ravens in the second round. But they could beat the Ravens. They've, they've already beaten the Ravens. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think the Browns are an A team. Yeah. Joe Flacco, Browns A. Is Ryan Weinstein D? Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say B, but I'll I'll agree with y'all for sure. 
All right. The Texans, a team that, you know, was a, projected to suck again. And now if they win on sun, Saturday, actually, I think, is their game against Indianapolis. If they win, I think they win the AFC South. They would steal it out from Jacksonville. Either that they or they would need the Jacksonville. Playoffs? Yeah. Uh, I, I think they're a, C a solid team for sure. Yeah, I was going to say C a. just because their expectation was an F and they have rose above it, but they've also – but C.J. Shroud also got hurt. That's the thing. That's kind of what caused their skid. Yeah, just for a couple games. But, I mean, dude, C.J. Stroud, he lights out with it. He's, if the Raiders could have traded for him and we did it, oh, my God. Can you imagine how good the Raiders would be right now? I know the Panthers are probably re regretting taking Bryce Young over him. Yeah, probably. No, 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 because you know who the owner is, right? Oh, Dave Tepper. Oh, Dave Tepper's decision. Yeah. But we all agree C tier for the Texans. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I think the Chiefs honestly belong in C tier because I don't see them going anywhere in the playoffs. Their receiving course sucks so fucking bad. Kadarius Tony has to have an intellectual disability. They got Travis Kelsey and a freaking bag of chips. <coughs> yeah. Isaiah Pacheco, he's all right. But, I mean, this is the worst season of Mahomes' career. It's really just pure Andy Reid arrogance to think, hey, we can take these bums off the street and, you know, Mahomes can make them great. You know, even Tom Brady had to play with Randy Moss, you know. It's like. You can't take anybody just because you have a great quarterback. And, you know, they went from a 13-win team to a 9-10-win team. Yeah, you Tom know? Brady at least had, like, a notable, legit wide receiver one every yeah. year. So, yeah, I I think they belong in C tier, even though they're going to be in the playoffs. They're probably the worst playoff team going to playoffs, in my opinion. Eh, I think Tampa Bay is probably the worst. Uh at least Tampa Bay has wide receivers. Yeah. Oh, could you imagine Mike Evans with Patrick Mahomes? That would be oh, yeah. so fucking sick. It'd be. Oh god! Imagine me a Raiders fan during that scenario. <laughs> but what about you, Zach? Where would you put the Chiefs? I'd say a C. I was gonna say like a B minus, but yeah, for sure. Like they haven't really been doing as much as they should have been. All right, I'll take this next one. The Cowboys are a B team, if you ask me, because we've seen them against the 49ers and like the Dolphins and teams that are Super Bowl favorites, and they've shit the bed against them. And I'm just going to say, this season doesn't fucking matter if we don't get past the divisional round. So, Because if we beat Washington, that means we would have the first two playoff games at home. And the Cowboys are undefeated at home. So it's like you guys are undefeated at home. You have a decent defense. You got an MVP quarterback. You got a offensive player of the year candidate in C.D. Lamb. It's like if they don't get past the divisional round, this season doesn't fucking matter. So that's why I don't trust them to be an A team because they shouldn't be trusted to be an A team until they show that they can win – Till they can get to the AFC champ or NFC championship. That being said, if they get to the NFC championship, I'll be happier than a pig and shit. But if they face the 49ers, I know they're going to get their freaking ass whooped no matter what. So I'm saying this season doesn't fucking matter. They don't deserve to be with the Super Bowl favorites right now. And I know people are saying, like, like, well, they just beat the Lions. Why wouldn't you put them in the same tier as the Lions? It's like, well, they got really fucking lucky against the Lions. I mean, that's the thing. Like, Dallas really should have lost that game. They should be 11 and 6 to end the season, but it's three straight seasons of 12 and 5. It's looking like now, you know, they could, I mean, something catastrophic could happen against Washington and they could lose. That being said, God, if they lose to Washington, I will be so fucking pissed. But yeah, this season, it it's NFC championship or bust. Like, if they don't make it to the AFC championship, Ah, damn it. NFC Championship. You fire Mike McCarthy and probably Dan Quinn, too. Because the Cowboys defense has really fallen off these last couple weeks. You guys agree with B tier? Yeah. Yeah. 
Chargers. Chargers are hard to. I I want to put them in F, but I feel like they're more D. But they also haven't shown any improvement since they got rid of Brandon Staley. You know, I think the team just sucks. I mean, I know Justin Herbert's hurt, but they weren't really doing that good with Herbert to to begin with. You know, and their defense has sucked all year. You know, we saw that Week One against Miami. Um, I I'd probably put the Chargers in F if I'm being honest. Yeah, Brandon Staley was the worst head coach, probably like even worse than Josh McDaniels. But that's saying a lot. You go an F with the Chargers too, Zach. Man, I want to give him a D, but yeah, we'll we'll go with F because it's close. It's hard to tell, really. But yeah, then... that's the thing. Like they they float between a D and an F, if you ask me. But I I look at more of they haven't shown improvement since they got rid of their coach. Yeah, no, it's bad. Like, like they're like predicted going to playoffs this year too. Yeah, Jets are a definite F. They tried to buy a fucking Super Bowl and it bit them in the ass. Like I said, I, I still haven't became on erect since Aaron Rodgers got hurt. And we'll talk about Aaron Rodgers here in a minute after this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm glad that the Jets <laughs> season blew up in their face. Fuck them. They belong in F. Any um... disagreements? I'd say probably like a D. All right, fine. (laughs) Panthers, F. Yeah. The Titans, I mean, they only got five wins, but they... Probably like a... I'd say a D or an F. Yeah, I'd say D. Those wins are very impressive wins. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, one of them is against the Panthers. The other one was... I can't remember, but they suck. Yeah, I mean, I like Mike. I like Mike Rabel a lot, but they're old, and yeah, that's the thing. Like their team's old. That's their problem. Like the DeAndre problem is all of the Titans is their fucking GM. Yeah. If they get a new GM, they're probably instantly better. The Colts, I think, deserve a B tier because I thought the Colts were only going to win like maybe two games this year. Even I thought Anthony Richardson was going to suck, and then he actually ended up being really fucking good. And then when he got hurt, I thought they were really going to suck, and then Gardner Minshew has been good. And I also didn't think they were going to get the Jonathan Taylor situation figured out. And Colts said, for what I thought they were going to be, I think they deserve a B. Yeah, that's fine. They've been, they've been pretty good this year. Yeah, I mean, they can make the playoffs, too, if they beat the Texans and if the Jaguars lose. And then speaking of the Jaguars, Jaguars are the definition of mid, if you ask me. Like, their offense is middle of the pack. Their defense is middle of the pack. There's nothing really outstanding about the Jaguars, really. The like, basic white bitches. Better. Was that? They're basically like the basic white bitches. Yeah. Hell, Trevor Lawrence looks like a basic white bitch. <laughs> that long ass hair. So we all agree Jaguars C tier. Yeah. Alright. And so that is our yep. tier maker. The only one we did this season, but I figured it was a lot better than predicting meaningless games. Zach is our predictions champion for the year. He went eighty one and fifty five. Damn. Drew went in second place. He was 78 and 58. And then I was 74 and 62. Yeah, Zach, you are our predictions champion for this year because we're not going to count the playoff games since there's not that many of them. And I mean, we'll still do play- predictions for the playoff games these next couple weeks. But yeah. Congratulations to you. And then who ended up winning your guys' fantasy football matchup? Who finished third place? I think Zach did. Did yeah, you? Yeah, I think I. Uh-huh. All right. So was that your dad or your stepdad who won first place? That was my dad. Your dad? Mm-hmm. Uh, tell him I said congratulations. Hell, C.D. Lamb picked the perfect week to go off, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. He really did because that saved him. 
Yeah. And if I would have put George Pickens in, I would have been in the thing. But I didn't put George in, so I mm. lost to my dad. Like you still like all your skill position players like fucking wrecked me. Yeah, that was crazy, dude. Doesn't help Patrick off. fucking Mahomes was overrated as hell this year. Should have traded his ass long that time ago. I'm still pissed I gave you fucking Raheem Mozart. <laughs> God knows how many times he saved my ass. Yeah, fuck you. But I'm already ready for next fantasy season. I mean, fantasy football is so fucking fun, if you ask I me. I am never drafting Patrick Mahomes again. Good, I'll take him. They're going to fix that offense. The Chiefs are going to be better next year. I hope to God not. Like, they'll probably draft some, <laughs> some speedsters in the draft if I had to bet. I hope to God. Travis Kelsey retires finally. They never get a good right receiver again. And they run back, stay sucking. Yeah, the Chiefs, I, I think they'll be better next year. But, all right. Zach, do you want to get into uh, Aaron Rodgers and Jimmy Kimmel, or do you got to go? Uh, I should probably go, but what do you what do you mean? What's going on with that? So, you know oh, how? Yeah, he said I'm gonna sue him, and he's like talking about it. He's like, yeah, okay, yeah, because Aaron Aaron Rodgers said that Kimmel is gonna be on Epstein's list, <laughs> and I don't even know if Epstein's list has officially came out yet or not, but. All I'm going to say is Kimmel is fucking creepy looking. Well, I know for a fact, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that every single person that's been there is crazy or weird, but I'd say the people who went there frequently, like the most, are the ones that knew something about it. Because, I mean, everyone's really been there if you think about it. I mean, every Mm -hmm. actor pretty much has almost been there. I mean, there's some that have just read. Because they felt bad, they were just like, "I'm not going. This ain't nah. This ain't." What Dude, I fucking in Ellen whatever. like went there a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So like, and she's kind of weird a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I don't know. It's it's wild, really. Yeah, this was one of the few times I actually liked Aaron Rodgers, and I <laughs> I really just liked the reaction he got at Kimmel. <laughs> I love how he. I mean, he didn't get a reaction out of that. Like at a. Travis Kelsey because he called him Mr. Pfizer. Yeah. And he was just like, I am. <laughs> but yeah, he's like, hey, asshole, I'll sue your ass or something. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what happened to the days when be like, I'll whoop your ass if you talk about me again? No, it's like, I'll see you in court. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's like Jimmy Kimmel and Aaron Rodgers, I think they're around the same age. Aaron Rodgers is like, what, 40? See how old Jimmy Kimmel is. It's like it, it'd be a and semi. If I was Jimmy, I'd be like, "Yeah, meet me out there in the front yard, dude. You got a bad key." Yeah, meet me at FC's Island, punk. <laughs> God. So, God. So Jimmy Kim- Jimmy Kimmel's older than I thought he was. He's fifty six, so he's Damn. sixteen years older than Aaron Rodgers. But yeah, Aaron Rodgers also has a torn Achilles, so I think that evens it out to a fair fight. <laughs> But yeah, I say we, we've went from I'll fucking stab you if you talk about me like that again to I'll see you in fucking court, asshole. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, but Zach, thanks for joining us, man. Hope yeah, you have no a good problem. day. We'll see for you next sure. week. Uh, yeah, I'll hit you guys up and uh, we'll we'll figure something out for sure. Yeah. So we got playoffs starting next week. I'm gonna be a nervous wreck if we end up facing the Packers. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'll see you, buddy. All right. You guys have a good one. You, you too. too. All right. Bye. Uh, yeah. After his Broncos game to Rage, I'll be, I'll be a Detroit Lions fan. Unless they play the Cowboys. Yeah. Still a Detroit Lions fan. Go on, dude. I need the Cowboys to go to the NFC Championship just to make me not lose hope. <laughs> Dude, if we if we made it to the Super Bowl and I end up having surgery on my foot, you know, freaking depressed I'm gonna be to like not be able to jump up. And I always said like if the Cowboys made it to the Super Bowl, I would run around the freaking neighborhood screaming it. <laughs> but if, like if I end up having surgery on my foot and then 
I'll just crutch around the neighborhood going, Cowboys to the Super Bowl! Oh, dude, I did like half a mile because um, my mom had a doctor's appointment the other day and I went with her to get out the house, you know? But yeah. it was in one of the tallest buildings in fucking Tulsa. And I think on my phone it said I did half a mile on my crutches and I felt it. The next day, my arms hurt so bad. Like a workout. Yeah. I know. I've actually lost five pounds since I got hurt. Really? Yeah. Good for you. I know. That's the thing. I was worried about gaining weight. Oh, did you hear about what Stephen A. Smith said the other day? No, I did not. So, you know how they play the Rose Bowl in the same stadium every year? Um, I think the Sam's called the Rose Bowl. Yeah. But he was saying they should move it to SoFi Stadium. Or let him fly a helicopter into the stadium so he can avoid the L.A. traffic. It's like, dude, you don't know how to relate to normal people, do you? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I was like, Stephen A. is like the most out-of-touch 50-year-old man I've ever seen. Like, I would expect like... like every, like, 50-year-old there is... I I would expect like Donald Trump to say something like that or Bill Gates or you know somebody who's like in their eighties in their eighties and old, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Steve Nason is like those old people who try to stick with the trend. Yeah. I know I've because I follow him on Twitter and it seems like he's trying to become the meme king, you know, now. And it's like he's he's not that good at it. <laughs> God. Like, I can imagine is, is it a bunch of like minion memes? No, it, it's memes of himself. That's the thing. <laughs> like the stay off the weed or um the one where he's like looking out the window like this, you know. Yeah. Like he did that one whenever Snoop Dogg said he was giving up uh weed and he said like I won, but at what cost? And he did that one where he's like looking out and I was like, dude, like <laughs> You can post memes, but if you post memes about yourself, you're a fucking douchebag. If I ever became a meme, I would never post memes about myself. I find it weird when like like people I follow on Twitter use like gifts of themselves. I always find that weird. Dude, if I ever use a gift myself, it'd be my ass shaking. <laughs> That's the other thing. Whenever Whenever I'm, like, healthy and can go out and shit, I'm getting so fucking shit-faced. Like, somebody's gonna have to drive that night because I will be the freaking drunk white bitch. Oh, man. I would love to see that. <laughs> uh, I haven't been, like, super shit-faced in a while. Like, I think the last time I was was that when I had the house to myself and... I almost burned it down after trying to make oatmeal, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't think I've been that level of stupid in a while. So, I mean, hell, I almost burnt my house down and had my address typed out to a crazy chick. Oh, man. You, that's bad. Yeah. And speaking of. I mean, the house part wasn't that bad. The fucking text your address to a crazy bitch. That's bad. Dude, that chick was fucking insane. Like, she sent me a picture of her holding a fucking butcher's knife. And you I'm just, just like, Shove that up my ass. I'm like, I fucking cut my dick off, isn't she? She's gonna recircumcise my dick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I Lesson of the day, kids, just stay away from crazy women. <laughs> and But then again, all women are fucking crazy, if you really think about you know it. Just stay away from women. Yeah, only dicks. <laughs> How many episodes is this now where we've pissed off the feminists? <laughs> I mean, we've probably been on a consistent streak. See, we're on episode 40, so probably 40 times. Probably 41. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like I showed you that girl I was texting, and it's like she was from like normal to fucking crazy, you know. And it's like, and I'm like, damn, you're really I fucking hot. Warned you. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't mention this to the people, but she's a Chiefs fan. I did warn you. He was like, oh no, it's fine. 
Guess yeah. we can fucking can't crawl back in, but the hey. Mr. Cripple himself. Hey, I'm not done yet. I didn't hear no bell. <laughs> all right, Mr. Professional. Hey, all I'm saying is this chick's fucking hot. It probably has a felony, uh, too. Yeah, I probably need to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's we'll two see. different types of Chiefs fans. One's with felonies, and one's are Taylor Swift fans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she sent me her Spotify most played list, uh-huh. and her her number one artist was Taylor Swift. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I, I meant to tell you that, but it's more of the photos she sent me, and there's three different hair colors between these photos. That's the thing where I'm like, uh, she might be a little she's a crazy. Swiftie, if... She's a t- cheese man, multiple hair colors. Dude, those are fucking red flags for me. I'm gonna marry this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'm gonna put a ring on that. <laughs> Go over here is like I can fix her. Hey, all I'm saying, you know, she's gonna suck really good dick. <laughs> She'll probably bite your fucking dick off. Mm-hmm. You say her name wrong, wrong mid mid intercourse. You're like, oh. I'm fucking dead. I think that's with any woman, though. <laughs> well, I don't know. She like, might keep a Glock under the pillow. I don't know. I never say names whenever I'm in the act. <laughs> <laughs> Bob! Bob! <laughs> <laughs> You're about to come, and you go, Bob! Bob! <laughs> Propane. The only time it's acceptable is if her name's Peggy. <coughs> and you go, oh, oh, peg me, Peggy. Shit. <laughs> but um, the only reason why they call you Peggy. Uh, dude, I cannot wait for that fucking reboot. Dude, it's taken for fucking ever. I'm like, I can't wait for them to get this freaking reboot out. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's gonna be so good when it comes out. Because as long as you still have Hank and Bobby, I mean, it's gonna suck not having Dale. But as long as you still have Hank and Bobby, you basically got King of the Hill still. You know, that's actually the show I need to start having on in the background while I'm like playing video games. I've been having the Ranch on in the background, which the Ranch is a really good fucking show. But King of the Hill, it's just like the ultimate comfort show. Not gonna lie, we said the ranch. I was thinking about Dr. Phil's ranch. <laughs> now, have you ever seen the ranch on Netflix with um Ashton Kutcher and Sam Elliott? No. Aw, oh, dude, you gotta fucking watch it. You like Sam Elliott, don't you? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Sam Elliott's freaking phenomenal in this show. Like you've never seen the clip where the ladies like I want you to come back on your drinking. He goes, no. She goes, I also want you to come back on red meat. He goes, try again. She goes, well, what about stress? What do you do to relieve stress? He goes, eat steak and drink whiskey. Yeah, I, I yeah. did see that. That's from The Ranch. and I mean, it has you know Ashton Kutcher and the dude that plays Hyde from that 70s show. He's in it. Um, Fez is in the third season. Like, there's a bunch of people from that 70s show in there. Like... The guy that plays Red, he's he's in there. Nice. He plays a guy with a brain tumor that makes uh, moonshine. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. And seeing him and Sam Elliott interact, it, it's awesome. Another like classic scene is Sam Elliott. He like opens the fridge and he goes, what in the fuck is almond milk? And Hash and Kutcher goes, it's milk from an almond. He goes, show me the tit on an almond. <laughs> and that, actually, there's one I posted on my channel uh, on Christmas Day. It was, uh, I'm not drunk. I'm festive. It's fucking Christmas. <laughs> yes. Say, you you got to watch it, dude. There's like 80 episodes, I think. My have it my watch list. And like, um, oh God, the wife on that show, Ashton Kutcher's wife on that show, 
Oh my god, she's so fucking hot. She is. <coughs> See, she is a the reason I was dreaming about blondes the other night. Like she she doesn't start out as hot at the beginning of the show, but she gets like progressively hotter as the show goes on. Uh this shit. Yeah. I mean yeah. Yeah. But dude, anything else you got on your mind? Well, I mean, honestly, how do you think the Cowboys, you guys, past like draft picks, been good, been doing? Like 2023 class has been doing. I think this class kind of sucked, but we mainly just drafted for like depth. So, you, you know, like none of them like were really going to be like starters. Yeah, like, like Mozzie Smith hasn't done anything. Luke Schoonmaker sucks. Uh, Overshawn got hurt. Here, I'll I'll pull it up so you guys can see it. Overshawn got hurt, and he looked pretty promising in the preseason, so he might plan out. Uh, Fajoko, I don't even think is on the team anymore. Uh, he is, but he hasn't played. Richards hasn't played. Eric Scott hasn't played. Deuce Vaughn's been all right. They just haven't utilized him really, but Deuce Vaughn looks like he has a lot of potential. And Jalen Brooks looks like he could be good. Um, if Jalen Tolbert didn't step up this year, I feel like Jalen Brooks would have got more opportunities. But since Tolbert's been good, I mean, Brooks only – he's only caught like one pass from – Dak Prescott, I think, and I think that's when Michael Gallup got hurt in the Eagles game, and uh, Jalen Brooks had a few catches, so he looks like he could be promising. Yeah. Um, here, here we'll put his stats real quick. Yeah, he has five catches for 63 yards, and he had a really big catch against the Eagles. But if the Cowboys can get out from Michael Gallup's contract after this season, I think there's a good chance – we might see Jalen Brooks take a step up in the offense. And Deuce Vaughn, really think it depends if the Cowboys keep Tony Pollard or not, what kind of role he can have. That's somebody the Cowboys could draft, I don't think with the first-round pick, but like a mid-round pick. They could get another running back in the draft and have him compete with Vaughn and um, Rico Dowdle. Yeah. Like and that, playmaker. I, Kind of running back. But other than that, I, I'd give this draft class like a D. Because the only one I like really like in this this draft is Deuce Vaughn. Now, like last year, let's look at our draft last year. You know, you got Tyler Smith, Sam Williams, Jalen Tolbert, Jake Ferguson, who are all key contributors on the line, and you got Deron Bland in the fifth round. Last year's draft class was phenomenal. Yeah. Like Clark, he's a he's a starter on. Was that? So yeah, pretty nice draft class. Yeah, like Clark, he's our starting linebacker right now. Um, and you know these guys didn't pan out, but you know Clark, Bland, Ferguson, Tolbert, Sam Williams, Tyler Smith. I mean, that's a really good draft class right there. I mean, at least these guys are still on the team, I guess. But I'm excited to see how Overshawn looks next year. Because he looked pretty good in the preseason. Yeah. But like I said, since we're going to be picking at the end of the first round, I think it. <coughs> but then again, like, because we looked at that mock draft earlier and they had a bunch of linemen going in the top 10. So who really knows how much talent's going to be there? Maybe they take a running back with the first round pick because I didn't see any running backs on that draft board. Yeah, running back or. or... Maybe some more D-line help. Maybe yeah. D-tackle. I mean, we got to re-sign Hankins. Yeah, but <laughs> he ain't getting younger. Yeah, that's true. Here, let's look at Cowboys free agents. <coughs> so you got Tyron Smith. He's gone. Tony Pollard might be gone. Stephon Gilmore... I think he might come back on like a one year deal. Deorance Armstrong, we need to re sign him. 
uh, Jayon Curse. I think Curse might be a candidate for the franchise tag, honestly. Um, Jordan Lewis. I know he just had a big interception. Let's see how he plays out the rest of the season because I know he had a big interception against the Lions on that screen pass. Dante Fowler Jr., uh, he's a key contributor. <laughs> yeah, he's been pretty good. Uh, this dude, <laughs> Noah, however the fuck you say his name, he can go. He sucks. Jonathan Hankins, we, I mean, he's going to be 32, but, I mean, you can get him for cheap, too. He's good there depth to have. Really? Trent Sig. Really? Oh, yeah, he's our long snapper. I mean, he's a good long guess, snapper. Yeah. Chuma, don't resign him. He sucks. <laughs> Neville Gallimore, he's he's pretty good. It wouldn't hurt to resign him. Rico Daddle, I mean, depends on how the draft plays out, honestly. And Tyler Biotish. Uh, Biotish should get a pretty long term contract. Yeah, you guys need to sign for a long term. Looks like we'll be negative eleven million dollars, but they also will restructure Dak and Zach Martin and Demarcus Lawrence's contracts. But the thing is, on the off season, they're really going to have to, you know, work on re-signing C.D. Lamb and Micah Parsons. Yeah, and Dak. I mean, if Dak wins the Super Bowl or gets them to the Super Bowl, he's going to get like a $300 million contract. But Van Der Esch, he'll probably be coming off the books because it looks like his career's over. Yeah, I mean, there's really... Once you restructure Dak and Martin and Demarcus Lawrence's contracts and probably Trayvon Diggs's, that'll open up a lot of room. Terrence Steele should take a pay cut, honestly, because he's been horrible this year. Yeah, I mean, they can clear up some space, but the Cowboys are never really big players in the free agency market. Like they, I mean, a lot of their people are people that they drafted, you know? Yeah. Like, like Lamb, they drafted Diggs, they drafted Gallup, drafted Terrence Steele, drafted Dak Prescott, Zach Martin, Demarcus Lawrence, Micah Parsons. Yeah. There's a bunch of people that they've drafted and okay, fuck these pop up ads. <laughs> but that they drafted and are, you know, key contributors now. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like they build through the draft and it's smart to do that just because you build through the draft, you don't have to spend that much on contracts. Well, at the same time, when that year comes, there's a lot of pretty much decisions to make. Yeah, but you have the cap space to make it then. Yeah, true. But like this year there I mean there isn't really like any like big name free agents for like this year, you know. Like the biggest guy I think they could possibly go after is Chris Jones, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think it'd be smart for them to go for Chris Jones to be honest. Yeah. Like Josh Allen's probably going to get franchise tagged. Um, Christian Wilkins will probably get franchise tagged. Antoine Winfield Jr., he'll probably get tagged. Like, I mean, the if guys anything, that are. Really- if the Cowboys are going to Spurge in the free agency, his main was just all on def. Yeah. Like, decent backups. But there isn't really any good O linemen. Like on this list I'm looking at right now, Tyron Smith is the top-rated O-line free agent, and Tyron Smith also gets hurt every fucking year. Well, I'm not saying like getting like starter caliber, like at yeah. least like notable good backups. I mean, you got Kevin Dotson from the Rams. He might, because what I think you could do, you maybe sign him to be a left tackle and move Tyron. <laughs> Or left guard, and you can kick uh, Tyler Smith out to left tackle. I said the Cowboys don't really make moves in free agency. I feel like their main focus this offseason is going to be getting Lamb and 
uh, Parsons re-signed. And if anything, actually, you should try to get Dak and Lamb re-signed because Micah Parsons franchise tag is going to cost the least out of all those dudes. Yeah, that, that, that'd be smart. Yeah. Because it looks like Dak's probably going to get like $250 million, which is going to be about $80 million more than his current contract. Uh, Lamb, I think Lamb's going to be the highest paid receiver after this season. Yeah. Because who's the highest paid right now? Is it Terry it's Kill? No, it might be Devontae Adams. Yeah, because he signed a pretty good contract. Uh, Tyreek Hill right now, uh, $30 million a year. Next is Cooper, or next is Devontae Adams at 28, and then Cooper Cup at 26. So I think Lamb will probably get $32, $31 million a year. That's fucking insane. I mean, he's been playing like the best receiver. Here recently, so. I mean, he's right behind Hill and Yards, I think. He's either past him or he's right behind him. No, yeah, he's second in the league in receiving yards. He's first in receptions and averages 13 and a half yards a catch. And how far behind is he from Tyreek Hill? Let's see, Hill has 1,707 yards, so Lamb's about... 70 yards behind him. And here's the thing. Hill's list is questionable for the game against Buffalo. CeeDee Lamb's healthy, and they're going to – I mean, they're going to need to beat the shit out of Washington. Yeah. I mean, they got to beat the shit out of Washington so they can get – so they can clinch the division. And Lamb, I mean, he didn't really have that good of a game when they played Washington on Thanksgiving, but they also won that game 45-10, to 10, so he didn't really need to. He had four catches for 53 yards and a touchdown. You know, that is a very much unmotivated commander's team. Yeah. As I think after this game, Ron Rivera gets fired. Yeah. And then who else gets fired? I think Eberflus is probably safe. Bill Belichick will get fired after the Patriots game. Probably Arthur Smith. Yeah. Yeah, because this, this website I'm looking at, it has Ron Rivera, Bill Belichick, Arthur Smith, one, two, three. <laughs> then Eberflus at number four. But I think after this late season run, Eberflus is safe. And then Dennis Allen, he he, I think he might get fired. He should get fired. Mm-hmm. There's a reason then, why the Rams fired him. And that's the list right there. Because, I mean, you've already had the Raiders get rid of their head coach. You had the Chargers get rid of theirs and the Panthers. So there's going to be eight head coaching jobs this offseason, it looks like. Eight, seven or eight. I mean, the Falcons hold on to Arthur Smith. They are fucking stupid. Yeah. So if they keep him, they deserve another year of misery. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's going to be it for the podcast. I'm going to have a lot of editing to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm going to tell you after we get done recording. But thank you, everybody, if you made it this far. Um, after I edit it, it'll probably be like an hour and 40 ish minutes but thank you if you made it this far appreciate you appreciate all the new subscribers i picked up uh hopefully i mean it's beginning beginning in january and i want to end this year at over a thousand subs and i mean that was a hell of a way to kick it off um all just by me being a jokester really (laughs) (laughs) like i was sitting in the doctor's office with my mom and i looked at my youtube page i had the devil worshiping number uh, as subscribers, and I was like, "Yeah, I, I really don't want to be stuck at that." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thank you for all the new subs. Seven hundred and eight right now. We're sitting pretty, and uh, depending on how this MRI looks, I might be home a little bit longer. So 
that gives me time to make more videos. I'm actually going to take that tier maker we did, and I might edit that down and upload that as a separate video. We'll leave it in the podcast, but upload it as a separate video, you know? Yeah. yeah. Drew, you got anything to say? Any drink recommendations? Coke and Malibu. Nice. It's also pretty good at um, coffee and salted caramel crown. Ooh, that that sounds really good. Dude, it's super. It's it's a little experiment I made. It's <laughs> it's probably well known, but I made it and it turned out pretty good. And I'll give a recommendation: uh, Mr. Pib and Vanilla Crown. It's or, basically like. Or um, those Calypso drinks, particularly the blue one and crown peach, sliced mm. pineapples, a couple of cherries, and um, just a splash of like a, a peach snob. So basically just crown and anything goes good with anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Also crown apple and Sprite. I can't wait to go out again and have a vodka Red Bull. I don't even like those really, but there's a go-to, you know. We need to go out and get some Jaeger bombs. Uh, you can do Jaeger bombs. I'll be fine. You don't Jaeger like Jaeger bombs. Like, Jaeger tastes like fucking shit. I fucking love Jaeger. Yeah, no, I'm good. Oh, you still haven't tried Serono, have you? Nope. Dude, I gotta get you on that. Di Serrano's fucking good. It's like, seriously, it's like the sweetest uh, like alcohol I've ever had. It's basically like a sweet whiskey. Really? Yeah. Oh, dude, I still need to try that fucking root beer, <laughs> root beer flavored whiskey that my uh, friend Andrew had because he said it's amazing and it sounds amazing. But yeah, this stuff right here, Di Serrano. Might have to get that shot. Hell, it's been around since like the 1500s, I think. It's from Italy. Flavor, sweet slash cherry slash almond. Ooh, almond. Yeah. Yeah, you don't but, hear a lot about almond drinks. But you remember that night... Um, you remember that night when everyone was texting the group chat during the Rumble Royal Rumble, and I was like, "It's fucking Edge, bro." And I mean, there's been countless incidents of that, but the first time I ever did that, yeah, yeah, that was off of Di Serrano. Huh. Yeah, so yeah, the 2021 Royal Rumble. <laughs> no recollection of that. <laughs> I I woke up. Or I passed out right when Edge was coming up, or right when Edge was coming out, and then I woke up to see Edge won. <laughs> Everybody, Train Wreck Podcast, episode 40. We'll see you next week. Cowboys are going to go to the playoffs, and I'm going to be a nervous wreck for a whole week. Hey, that's the other thing. I ain't going to have work to fucking distract me either. Like all week, I'm going to think about that Cowboys game. All right. See you next time. Have a great day. See ya.